Good morning, preppers. I hope your prepping is going well today. Time is short, as we say, and we're going to be discussing something in my mind truly could be a fearful thing. But again, we prep so we don't live in fear, but this is certainly a concern you need to take a look at. Uh, we've been talking about this actually in the past few months, but as summer is growing toward fall, we're going to see this much more and we're going to start seeing the crap hitting the fan. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this article right here. This is from a research group, Palm Beach Research Group. I like research groups because they often are non-biased in a lot of things. But in here, they're talking about the food crisis that's coming. And look, how to prepare and profit, which, you know, is a funny thing to look at. But, you know, when it comes to capitalism and such, you can actually profit on such things. Not that I'm condoning that. But preparing for it is, of course, what we really focus on. And he talked about going into, actually, my bad, she talked about going into a local Walmart. Um, I couldn't find any meat because the counters were empty. Um, something was wrong. And I'll be honest with you, at our Walmart, we didn't really, we're not really having that problem. Most of our stuff is pretty stocked up. Eggs, I think, are probably the biggest things. Um, and of course, they said, she said inflation is a big problem, leading to a crisis of emptying grocery stores across America. But again, I've mentioned that this is only the beginning of what's coming. Uh, and this is what she's saying too. When oil and natural gas prices go up, it's a snowball effect. In fact, I'm not even going to say it's just a snowball effect, but actually a lagging effect because diesel prices now causing the tractors to be more expensive to run for the farmers, to cause problems because the, the uh, fertilizers aren't there. The harvest coming this fall and delivering the produce to the stores using the same diesel prices that are up, um, we haven't even reached that yet. When we talk about the harvest for just and, and overall in America, we haven't seen the harvest coming in yet. That is mostly happening in the fall. And the prices that the farmers are paying now to be able to uh, bring in their own crops they're going to have to pass that along to the consumers, not to mention the trucking companies pass it along to the consumers, not to mention Walmart, if that's where you get your produce at, is going to have to pass it along to the consumer. So we've already seen some price increases. We've already seen ridiculous inflation, which again, I've said it many times, it's much higher than what the government is stating. And I've proved that in previous videos, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. The shortages coming along with it and the high prices for groceries coming this fall I'll say it again and again. Now is the time to prepare. Now is the time to prepare. And if you only have 10 extra dollars in the month, you better soak that $10 into food. That's all I'm telling you. Because what you're paying now, I've said this before, if you're paying a dollar for a can of corn coming this fall, coming next spring, that same can will be $1.50. And I would wager you're probably not getting that kind of increase in pay wherever your money comes from. So food is becoming more expensive for you and for me. So the more we can buy it now and stock up on it, the easier it's going to be later on. Even if you only have a dollar, it's a dollar. You put it into it. If you have $10, if you have $100, if you can actually buy the extra food and you have a couple hundred, this is the time. Do not be deceived. Because again, our Walmart, has a lot of stuff in it. I'd walk around there and say, "Wow, cool! The shortages aren't really that bad." And but it's it's simply almost like a, a almost like a false interpretation of what's going on because of this lagging effect. We're definitely going to be seeing much more difficult times coming. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so they talk about as far as diesel machinery, uh, natural gas is at a record, 14-year record high. All of this is going to be a lagging effect, and it's going to be a food crisis unlike anything we've seen. <laughs> this is scary stuff. And when they talk about all these things right here, according to the Business Insider, 80% of Americans are already experiencing shortages at grocery stores. And I do believe that. I mean, it doesn't tell how many shortages we have. Again, at our Walmart, I think right now, eggs is the biggest shortage we have. Oh, you know, honestly, maybe some wheat products perhaps, or maybe some peanut butter still. But everything you can imagine is what they're seeing coming on. We take it for granted. There's severe droughts in the West, as you know. The severe droughts are really bad. Um, to the point where yeah, I know we talked about as far as how long this drought's been going on and basically setting records too. And now they're even talking about as far as the amount of animals, amount of cows, um, all this stuff. So let's go ahead and go to the next article. So with this, the UN says the global food crisis is about affordability, not availability. And this is something I've mentioned before too. There's actually some farmers during the depression era who actually fared very well. They actually made records amount coming in because the amount of food they had, they actually still had a lot of food coming in but people couldn't afford it. But the people who did, they were actually getting much more bang for their buck. So, which is a really weird way to look at this. And if we're actually heading into a second depression, depression 2.0, that's something we need to take in consideration. 
They talked about the war in Ukraine to put a lot of fuel on the burning on the fire. Let's go ahead and talk about that for just a minute, because it's important to understand that as Russia cuts off fuel supplies and such, I saw a notification. I didn't put it out as far as a prepping video for us because it wasn't affecting us directly. But uh, one of the countries over there, I forget which one now, warned its citizens that if they actually don't try to get more fuel from somewhere, there's going to be riots this winter. Because I'll tell you, there's nothing worse than a population that's already not having enough food, but to take away their heat during the winter, you're asking for that government to collapse. That's a way to look at it. And so here in the United States, we have a ridiculous amount of food, I'll be honest with you. But the prices of food are going up. The availability of the food getting to the consumer is becoming more difficult. So even though the farms in America, just like we saw some farms during the Great Depression, still have the food, the food is not making it to the home table, either by shortages, um, as far as like the canned food, either by because of uh, the diesel prices and everything else, or because you simply can't afford it. So understand the food will still be out there. It's just going to be far more difficult for us to actually have on our plate to be able to um, eat. Okay, so let's continue on with this article. Um, they said that it's jumping another 8.5%. Fertilizer prices are also rising, still rising. Understand this is a brand new article. This is not something that came out a few months ago. Um, let's see. The war has put a lot of fuel on the already burning fire. Yep. And the war is going to get a lot worse, guys. You need to understand this. And, and this is not simply speculation. This is not me saying, you know, oh, wow, it's going to be bad and fear-mongering stuff. This is history. You know, we're actually in, living in the middle and experiencing the shifting of a new world order. And when this happens, um, again, I'm not talking about a global order, which could happen too. We're talking about a new world order. It is a trend that happens every so many years, and we're due. Whereas the United States is going to be taken out of the first spot as far as the order of the economy for the world. And when this happens, it practically speaking always happens with a major war. A major war. That's why Biden a few months ago says, guys, we're, if I'm going to war, I'm going to war with you guys. Who said we're going to war? It's because they already know it's coming. It's all orchestrated and planned. Obviously, in my opinion, but I think a lot of you guys would agree with that opinion as well. All right. Uh, let's see. Global food prices are up 13% higher. I think it's far more than that. Um, let's see. Fertilizer prices also rising. Energy prices going up. Heat wave in China. I don't know if you've been seeing that. They're actually experiencing a lot of the same things we are here in the United States as far as droughts and stuff goes. Rice is vulnerable. Man, I'll tell you right now, rice is one of the biggest things that we can sustain with for your food supply. Again, it's not always the best thing because of the heat going into it and the amount of calories, but you know what? It's food. Last article, the UN says food shortages are going to go from bad to worse. In other words, before we even jump into this, we're seeing that the food prices and the inflation and the shortages and stuff, they're already saying it's bad. You and I both know it's bad. That's why we are on this channel, Goshen Prepping, to be able to help accommodate for this. But it's going to get worse. That's what they're really saying. And that's what I've been saying too. Um, I find that a lot of people, we already know there's that big group of people who already bury their head in the sand. And those are going to become violent people, by the way, when their food runs out very quickly. But for us who are prepping, I find some people are prepping are like, oh, you know what? I've got an extra 30 bucks this month. I think I'll put $10 into food and 20 bucks into going out for dinner and a movie. I'm just speculating. I mean, I'll be honest with you, having morale up dinner and movie, it's not a bad idea. But personally, I'd rather put five bucks into the cheap movies. You know, our movies here have called Taco Tuesday. They're really cheap. Uh, and then 25 bucks into food. Because I don't think that some people are actually looking at the, the mag magnification of how bad this is going to be coming this fall. And especially we go into next, next uh, spring and winter, winter or spring. All right, let's see. This is very interesting. The omen port, uh, portends a coming catastrophic, when you see me weep. And what they did was, in Europeans in the Middle Ages, whenever the water would go down, they would actually put stones in there called hunger stones and actually to mark the water levels. And as the water goes down and down and down, some of the water stones, hunger stones actually become uh, above the surface of the water now. And one was actually subscribed with, when you see me, weep. In other words, when you actually see this in the Elbe River in the Czech Republic, uh, when you see the water levels going down that much, you better weep because now we're in big trouble. And a lot of these surfaces and islands have actually um, resurfaced. Even some Buddhist statues, 600 years old, had resurfaced. And it's funny because when we talk about water, the whole thing with water, 
we, we have a very amazing water cycle where it rains, goes in the mountains, comes down to the, ends up in the ocean, evaporation back in there. And you have this water cycle that continues, but water seems to be, and please, can somebody help me with this? Seems to be disappearing from the earth. In fact, I looked at some articles on this and a lot of them saying, yes, it is disappearing, but where is it going? And uh, if you actually look at some underground caverns, like there's a huge one in the middle of the United States, there's another one in the middle of Europe. Uh, there's one in China that's actually going dry. These underground caverns, which in the United States, these farmers have actually tapped through through wells for for 100 years, are down to such low levels, they don't seem to be filling back up again. We seem to be drying up as far as the planet goes. And when you actually see these futuristic sci-fi movies and all these shows like the Earth completely dry and void, it seems to be heading that way. It's very interesting. Mad Max was right the whole time. All right, go back to this. Let's see. Severe drought in the West. 40% of farmers to sell off their cattle herds. 97% of California is in a drought. And California produces 25% of America's food. So although I think right now the United States has enough food to feed the United States, that may not be the case because you have to understand, in that situation, we may have enough food to feed us, but guess what we do with a lot of our food? Yep, you guessed it, ship it overseas to other countries. And I'm all for helping out other people, but we have to be able to help ourselves first. If we can't keep our economy going so it won't tank and collapse, if we can't keep our people fed to keep them from riots, then what's all this for? Okay, so we really need to be able to take care of ourselves first and then take care of people in the rest of the world, which again, I'm all for that too. Um, let's see. Threatening to cut water in 25% of its drought-stricken st states. That's true. The water levels are actually hoarding it for other areas now. Um, let's see. I don't know if there's a whole lot of here. Biblical proportions. Look at this. The food shortage is threatened to destabilize economies worldwide. This is so huge. This is probably what it comes down to. And this is actually like the bigger fear that we're talking about than simply just not having enough food. Because you have to understand that when people don't have enough food, when they don't have enough money for food, when they don't actually have the nourishment coming in, even water, they actually have unemployment, their jobs, et cetera, their mindset is government did this to us. I'm not talking about any partisan. I'm not talking about any type of specific president or past president. I'm not saying any of it at all. Government's doing to this, us, doing this to us. And we get really mad and violence and rioting and everything will take place afterwards. So when I say that we're looking at a worldwide famine, when I say we're actually heading into a possible, a probable famine here in the United States this fall and coming in the winter and spring, it's not simply just about having enough, not having enough food, but it's talking about riots and civil unrest. And I will say it again, this is orchestrated. This is planned. When they actually have the fertilizer levels going down to the United States because of what's happening with Russia and Ukraine, you say, well, that's because of a war. War orchestrated, not whatever. But when they actually refuse to ship the fertilizers across the United States, that's orchestrated. That, that basically is a tell showing that they're trying to make all these prices and everything go up. Not to mention the insane amount of borrowing that the government's doing to fund not just Ukraine, but just trillions of dollars. This is a step heading for economic collapse. So it's not simply about famine. It's not simply about not having enough food, although as preppers, we should. It's about understanding the economic collapse that follows. I'm not saying that will possibly follow. I'm saying the economic collapse that will follow because history teaches us this is what happens over and over and over. Scary times coming. So anyways, this person, I'm not an alarmist. It's just the brutal truth. And that's exactly it. Uh, the United States will not be spared because of this. Now, other countries, third world countries will be really hitting it harshly, but the United States in the land of luxury and Taco Bell and all that stuff that we take for granted, not me, but other people do, um, they're going to have a very rude awakening because of this. 80% of Americans dealing with shortages at the grocery stores. Okay, which I already mentioned before. Um, let's see, farmers can't plant enough crops. They don't actually do it because the fertilizer is too expensive, severe drought conditions. So look at this. I want you to understand this. This is what it comes down to. It doesn't matter if you're Francis Marie Antoinette in the 1700s, the Arab Spring in 2010, Sri Lanka, which you just noticed just collapsed. All of these citizens have toppled governments and monarchies when food becomes expensive and scarce. That's where I want to stop this video because that is what it comes down to. It's not just about food. And the thing is, let's say that you hit the lottery 
and you built yourself a bunker and you stocked it with 15 years of food and weapons and ammo and everything else for you and 10 of your closest friends, what's happening outside the bunker is something that's coming that I believe, unfortunately, and I hate saying this, I believe is inevitable. Not it's inevitable as in like, oh, there's nothing we can do about it, even though partially too, because we're just a bunch of peons, but because it was orchestrated. They've been planning this for a while. It all started in 2020. And as we think, see things escalating between the food plant fires and the riots, and because now we see the drought. And uh, I mean, people say, well, how can you control a drought? Well, you actually need to research HARP as far as the military be able to control weather. There's all kinds of things like this. And it's simply just, instead of focusing on one tree in front of you, and that's the drought, another tree over here, oh, look at this one, a food shortage. Look at all the trees. We're standing in the middle of the forest. And this is a forest of doom. That's my quote for the day, the forest of doom. All right, guys, so look, time is super, super short. You need to stock up as much as possible, not just food, although that's going to save your life but things to be able to protect yourself, you set up your community now because when crap hits the fan, it's going to be too late. Okay, thanks for watching.